My name is Tongo Gara, and I'm from the Free Mumia Abu Jamal Defense Campaign UK. Mumia Abu Jamal is a political prisoner in the United States for the last 30, over 30 years now, of which he has spent three decades on death row, framed for a political for a crime for which he did not commit. But Mumia campaign goes beyond the individual Mumia Abu Jamal. Mumia campaign for all oppressed peoples and all national minority people across the world. Today we are here in solidarity with the Sikh people in their struggle against the attempt by the Indian government to suppress that community over many, many, many decades. And we today recognize that the struggle of the Sikh people against the death penalty in India is part and parcel of a global struggle of the oppressed people against the death penalty. The death penalty is used as a means of silencing political dissent, is a means of suppressing all legitimate struggle. It is a means of which the state think it can terrorize people into silence. The people will continue to resist and continue to fight against these oppressive laws and oppressive policies which characterize most society today. They are approximately some 25,000 people worldwide facing execution. And I'm sure many of them, that is a very conservative figure, it may well be more. Because so far, we know that there are many, many people in India facing execution. We also know that there are many who have been executed, summary executed, by the police and by the army. And we also know that many people have been disappeared. And we know there's a lot of abuse of women and children too. And so it is necessary for people to recognize the nature of our struggle. That the struggle must be a part and parcel of all the oppressed people and working people across the world if we are to realize our legitimate rights and to win our right to self-determination and to be a free and determined people. The various political parties in India have been engaged in all sorts of hysteria and all sorts of vicious violence whipped up against minority people. As a consequence of that, many Sikhs have been killed and are going back many, many years, perhaps much younger than, well, much far longer than before you were born. But certainly I recall when Mrs. Indira Gandhi, then Prime Minister of India, ordered the troops to storm the Golden Temple, and which many people were killed in there. And as a consequence of that, the persecution of the Sikh people continues. I've also stood with the Sikh community against the attempted execution of some 17 Sikh men in the Arab states a few years ago. I think there were 17 of them who were accused of killing another Sikh, for which all 17 were sentenced to death. There was a campaign, and I've met some people from Leicester, some Sikh from Leicester, whom which I was in touch with and who I supported involved in that campaign. So the struggle continues in the so-called Arab states. There are many, many executions. In the United States, there are many executions continuing so-called democracy. But we know, for instance, that there's, the United States have over 4,000 people on that row. The majority are African people and Latino people. We also know that the United States has some 2.5 million people locked down in the prison. In the prison. Some 20, some, some uh, many, many are political prisoners, including Mumia Abu Jamal, including Sandy Artia Kohli, including Leonard Peltier, including Kevin Rashid Johnson, many, many political prisoners. Herman Wallace and Albert Woodcox are two who have done some 40 years in solitary confinement. So the struggle to raise the issue of the death penalty of political persecution of national minority people in India and right here in Britain, let's not forget Britain where we are, where we are. We have to mobilize a large cross section of people so that they fully understand that they have to look beyond the headline news in which the news media often demonize and distort the reality and distort the facts sought to portray the national minority as a people which is not deserving of any solidarity at all. But we are convinced that our cause is a just one, 
and a just cause will always enjoy the support of all people across the world. Every country today, in every country, almost every country, from Latin America to Asia to Africa, people are struggling, struggling against poverty, struggling against oppression, struggling against mass killings. And this is what is required for us so that we can come together to put an end so that people can take control of their lives and begin to lead a life so that they can be free from political persecution and, uh, and, and mass killing. Thank you.